What's up, everybody? So as I've been thinking about getting into this whole topic of psychedelics, I have wondered how I will begin to unpack everything. And I thought at first I was going to do like a consecutive unfolding video to video of different things that happened along the time that I was in the new age and using psychedelics. And I have changed my mind with how I'm gonna do things. I was asked a couple times to share about my experiences that I had in these crazy like psychedelic visions that I experienced. And I think I'm just gonna start off with like the mothership experience story where I am going to explain a psychedelic vision that I had on DMT where I met the devil. And I'm going to call this video, I met the devil on DMT. And then we're gonna get into after I share my experience, just kind of like wrapping our minds around everything. And I'm gonna share what I've learned now that it's been a solid, probably, let me think about this, how long it's been, probably over 10 years or so since I had this experience. And I have learned so much. And what I've learned over these over 10 years that has gone on since this experience has kind of changed as I've changed and as I've grown and as I've gotten free from different beliefs and states of mind and stuff like that. So we're going to get into all of that at the end. Um, I'm going to give a disclaimer probably for all of these videos. Um, but that is that this is my experience. This is my learning experience. This, is, this, these were my psychedelic experiences. And just because I experienced this doesn't mean that you are going to experience this or that I'm generalizing and saying that everybody has had these experiences. Um, so I hope that everybody can watch this with an open mind. Um, I also want to give a disclaimer that as we get into thinking about and wrapping our minds around what this means and what this could mean, that we're going to be exploring different ways of looking at this. We're not going to look at just one um religious or spiritual perspective, we're going to kind of look at a broad perspective as far as um, the ways that different religions and possibly cultures could look at something like this. Because basically, we're going to be looking at things that are not in this material realm. We are going to be looking th at things that are of a, a spiritual nature and that are in the spiritual realms. So I have my personal opinion, as you know, if you have been with this channel for a while and you know what my opinion and what my view and what my faith is all about. And if you're just coming to this channel, you can check that out in previous videos. It's pretty clear what I'm about. Um, but we are not going to be looking at things just from my perspective. We're going to be looking at things from many perspectives. Does that mean that I am in full agreement with these other perspectives? It may not. But we're going to be looking at things from that broader perspective because it's my hope and my intention that this video can reach um, a broader scale of people who may have experienced something along these lines or people that may be interested in psychedelics as a whole. So um, I also, as you know, if you watch this channel, like I'm really into 
looking at the big picture of things and looking at how things could be from another perspective, although it may not be in line and resonate completely with my personal beliefs, I always like to understand the big picture. So that's going to be our general disclaimer for this video. Okay, so moving forward with my story and my experience. Um, I had been using psychedelics for a while at this point. I started taking them in more of a recreational way when I was in my teens and I let them go for a while in my early 20s, but in my mid to late 20s, psychedelics crossed my path again and I was at a place where I was looking for healing from my trauma. I had quit drinking alcohol at that point, probably five to seven years before, depending on where we're at in my psychedelic usage that we were in in my late 20s. Um, I was using them as a way to um, find the deeper meaning of life. I was looking to them to understand who God was, what God was. And so I had found myself in a place, I come from a background of uh, faith, and you can understand more about that in my other videos, but I had turned my back on, on my faith and, and in God as I knew him, because I had gone through a lot of loss and a lot of challenges in my life. And I looked at it like if there was a God and he allowed to happen what did, then I wanted nothing to do with him. So I turned my back on my faith as I knew it um, through my life and turned my back on God as I understood him at that time. So in this place where psychedelics came back and crossed my path, um, when I was younger, I was just kind of using them as like a, like a recreational sort of aspect. I wasn't using them looking for deeper meanings or for answers about who God was, what the purpose and meaning of life was. I was just using them for fun, basically, and as a way to escape what I was going through in my life a lot of times. So... I had found myself in this place where I was looking for a deeper meaning. I was looking for answers. Sorry, there's like a little gnat that's flying in the frame. I apologize about that. Um, so in this, I was left in like kind of a vulnerable position because at this point, I was just kind of opening myself up and looking for answers. I want to give a little preface too, because this is going to play into a lot of these psychedelic videos that I'm going to get into where I share about my experiences and then what unfolded from the psychedelics and the stuff that I went through with them themselves was that I, from the very time that I was conscious basically, knew that there was more than these material realms. I had two near-death drowning experiences, one when I was three and one when I was six. And in both of these experiences, I basically left my body and I went to a place where I was surrounded by beings that were emitting like pure love and I felt such peace and such calm. And both of those times I was saved um, from the, the near-death drowning experience. And I moved forward in my life, but I always kept a knowing of what I had gone through in those experiences. And so as I started to get older, I knew that there was more, like I said, to the material realms. I was always an extremely sensitive, creative person from the time that I was young. And so in that, I was spiritually sensitive as well, where I would have um, experiences as a child where I would just kind of sense the presence of like what I then would come to the understanding of at different points that they were my guardian angels. And I would always remember these experiences throughout my life that I was, you know, brought to these places where I was surrounded by these beings. 
And so as I got older and I got into the psychedelics again and I was using them looking for these deeper meanings, I had this very strong knowing that there were these, you know, guardian angels and that there were these as I got into different, you know, aspects of the new age that I would start calling them my spirit guides. And so I had this like understanding as I was using these psychedelics. And so we'll get into like what I experienced. And I want to say too, starting off with like, I didn't know that this was um something bad when i when i made contact with this being and the name of this video is titled i met the devil on dmt but i'll i'll be straight up i'm not sure if it was the devil himself i'm not sure if it was the adversary himself um i do know that um, there were many different experiences that I had where I crossed paths with these entities and these beings in the spiritual realms, but there was none like this. And, and why I suspect that it could have been the adversary, it could have been the devil, is because, and well, I'll explain it in a moment, the way that, that this being presented itself was different than any other beings that I had made contact with, either in these psychedelic experiences or in my waking life. There was something very different about this being. So I'll start talking about it and then we'll unpack it in a moment. So I took my hit of DMT, my couple hits of DMT, and I started to go under, and this was something that I had done pretty frequently at this point. And each time that I used DMT, I went through this like portal almost, where I went through a tunnel of, it was almost like stained glass looking like colors and patterns and shapes. And I went through this tunnel. And sometimes on the other end, I would end up in like this kind of like waiting room sort of thing, if you will. It's kind of how I associated it in, it in my mind. But this time it was, it was different. I was let out into this whole other like realm that I was flying over like I was in a plane or something. And I'm looking down and I'm seeing the structures of these buildings and they're all made of iridescent glass. And the light is so beautiful in this. It was so beautiful in this realm because it's hitting this iridescent glass and it's like reflecting all of these different like beautiful prisms of colors that you can only see in these other types of realms. And so I'm flying over this like, it's like a city almost. And I go to this one building and I go into the building and it's made of this like iridescent, like diachroic glass looking stuff. But there is this like beautiful, like gold sheen to all of it. And it all felt like so like ethereal and like achingly beautiful. It's hard to describe like the beauty of this space that I was in. And so from the very jump of this experience, like I'm in complete awe. I'm in like, just like immersed in this like beauty and like I'm an artist and I'm a writer. So like the way that this space is like, just like washing over me is is it's beyond words and the way that the colors are trying to explain them as an artist it was hard it's it's hard to to even explain like our human words don't even suffice like the 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 types of colors and the types of beauty that was in this realm so from the very jump like i knew that i was somewhere special and I should mention too that I went into this experience as I would go into all of these psychedelic experience at this, at experiences at this point where I was seeking. I was seeking for answers. I was seeking for knowledge and wisdom. And I was seeking in these psychedelic experiences, these connections with these, you know, what I thought were being, you know, like benevolent beings and my spirit guides and my angels. 
And this experience in particular, I had just ended a job that I had been with for a lot of years and I was at this turning point in my life where I wanted answers as to what I was supposed to do next because I had been at this job for almost 10 years and it was such a huge part of who I was. And I think it might be important to mention too, it was at a hippie cafe that was actually founded in the late 60s when the owners climbed a tree on acid and had like a vision of this cafe that they would have that served vegetarian food and that was like a meeting place for politics and creative people. It had multiple music stages in it. Um, so like this place was such a big part of my life and it's interesting that like psychedelics were also the foundation of it and like psychedelics were like a part of like the culture there and there were people that used them and so i had ended this job and like you know obviously like using psychedelics for a deeper meaning and like where i was going spiritually was such a big part of my life at that point and so like this cafe like had become a part of my identity and be had become a part of like who I was. And so my job ended there and I knew that it was like the ending of one chapter and the beginning of another. So I went into this DMT experience like asking questions, setting the intention for this trip that like I wanted answers about my life and I wanted, um, I wanted like to know what I should be doing moving forward. So back to being in the trip, like I am in this beautiful building and I walk in and there are just like, like it's this really, really long hallway, all made of this iridescent, like gold shining glass and lining this hallway are all of these like it almost looked like if you remember i don't know i don't know if everybody remembers this but i do it was like the dewey decimal system drawers that we used to have in the library when we were kids i know if you're a little bit younger you're not going to know what i'm talking about but it's basically it was basically like um this like uh how do you explain it like all of these little drawers would be in um like these like shelves in a library in the libraries when we were younger before there were computers and you would open up these little drawers they were like this big and there would be all of the different like books that were in the library so to find a specific book you would go into these drawers and there would be all these little cards and you would pull up the book that you were looking for and then find it in the library so that's what was in like the lining this hallway from like floor to ceiling of this like beautiful hallway and each drawer was and this was all like if you if you've ever had these psychedelic experiences before you may know what I'm talking about where there is this like it's not an audible voice it's just like this like internal communication and dialogue that is communicated when you're in this like space and so it was communicated to me that each drawer in this like all of these like these like lining as far like this hallway went as far as you could see and it was just basically endless in each drawer that was like lining the walls of this hallway represented each of our lives. And so that was communicated to me. And then all of a sudden, this being appears and it was the most beautiful looking being. I couldn't see its face. It was just made of all light, like the most beautiful glowing warm light and it had this light blue sash across its chest. And that's, that's what I could see of the being. And it presented itself. And I knew even this is, this is so, so interesting about this, that like, I was instantly drawn to this being and I instantly felt this like connection with this being, but I knew there was something deep down inside of me that was like, 
kind of questioning it and sensing that like, okay, something isn't completely right. And I had that with all of my psychedelic experiences where like something was not completely right in all of them. And so this being approaches me and I am just like in awe and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, you know, and that you, again, you're not communicating with words when you're in this space, but you're just like, there's this communication that's going on. And so it says to me in that, you know, weird unspoken, unspoken communication that, you know, it's, it's time to do a review of your life. And it's time to, to let me know like what I'm supposed to do moving forward. So we go down this hallway and it gets to this drawer that represents my life and it opens the drawer and each of the different um, like uh, little cards or whatever that are in this drawer, similar to the Dewey Decimal System, each of the cards represent basically everything in my life, every experience of my life, every choice, every consequence, every um, good thing, every bad thing, like pretty much every moment in my life is supposed to be represented on these cards in this drawer. And so this being is going through these cards and it's telling me, you know, okay, like, you know, the, these are different things that have happened through your life. And, you know, these are the good things that you've done. These are the bad things that you've done. And now we're getting into, you know, currently where I'm at. And it says to me, it communicates with me that like, you know, you are exactly where you need to be. You are, you know, you are evolving and you are, you know, enlightened to the point that, you know, exactly where you need to be. And your work with plants is what you need to be doing. Your music is what you need to be making. Your uh, art is what you need to be making. You know, your role in your family is exactly where it needs to be. And so it goes through this review and it's telling me like, kind of everything that I wanted to hear, to be honest with you. And so it tells me all of these things and then it's it starts going past like, you know, current time and it's starting to go into these different cards that are in the future. And it's like, you know, okay, so, you know, moving forward, you know, you're, you're supposed to be continuing your work with plants and your, and you know, your music and your art. And it's telling me to continue what I'm doing. Like I'm exactly where I'm, I need to be and to continue what I'm doing. And, you know, in this experience, I'm just like, you know, oh, you know, perfect, great, you know, awesome. This is, you know, this is what I wanted to hear. And so it closed the drawer and then I started to slip away from, you know, the, the, the realm that I was in. Cause that's how DMT works where like you're immersed in, you know, this experience for however long, and then you, you come out of it. And in some time, in some ways I've experienced where it's like an instantaneous thing, like, boom, I'm awake. But with this, it was like this, like slowly, like, you know, um, like fading away. And then I went through that tunnel again, and then I woke up. And so I woke up and I just was floored. Like I was like, like how, like how, I mean, even, even explaining it now, all of these years later, because, you know, like I said, it's been over a decade and even now I find it difficult to art articulate it exactly because the depths of like the, like how real it felt and how like there was like an emotional connection that was going on in this where like, you know, I'm completely opening myself up to like, whatever this being is telling me and whatever this like you know this experience was like how it was affecting me because in with dnt experiences like you still feel who you are a lot of times there's a lot of you know, a lot of us have gone through ego deaths that have experienced psychedelic um stuff where like you completely separate from who you are but it wasn't like that with, with this, like I was completely, you know, myself and I was going through this experience and like, it was this like emotional experience too, because I'm putting myself out there in a way where I'm so vulnerable and I'm like looking for answers about my life and I was given them. So, 
All right, like there it is. Like you guys have been asking about like some of these interactions that I've had and these experiences that I've had. And like I said, like this is like one of the mothership experiences that I went through where like this too, like I've explained before, like this experienced like shaped my reality for so many years. And so I, I'm, I'm trying to find the right words in a way to like transition this into like what we're going into. Let's just like start to break it down. Okay. Like, all right. Um, this being that I was interacting with, sorry, as you find me grappling for my words, but as you can probably imagine, this is kind of hard to like, you know, explain or get into. And it's been a lot of years too. And I, except for recently when I've been asked to do this video, like I remember this experience, but I don't really focus on it anymore. So as we're talking about this, and this is super like awesome for me to do. It's hard, but it's awesome because it's allowing me to like process this and to like, you know, use it to hopefully like, you know, inform and and you know help you if you find yourself in a place where you're questioning like oh should I use these substance substances or you know oh I'm using them and I'm kind of having these experiences so I hope that like doing this is going to help you in some sort of way but like okay like let's get into actually before we get into that being and I can tell right now this video is going to be a long one so just buckle up because I don't want to break this up. I want to keep this, this in, in this, all this stuff in this one video. So let's first break this down. Like, okay, in most religions around the world, most cultures around the world, the major ones, there is a breakdown of the, um, the levels of the heavenly realms. It is in the Bible where it talks about how there are three levels to the heavenly realms. And the first one is, is basically like space and, or pardon me, the first one is the sky, my bad. The first one is the sky. So like what we see in the sky and then the second level is space. And then the third level is like where, where God dwells and where these other spiritual beings dwell. Um, in Buddhism, there is also different levels to the heavenly realms for them. And in one of their levels is, they call it um, the realms of the hungry ghosts. And so that is their uh, way of explaining these, these levels where there are these other beings that dwell. And there are other religions that also like, you know, kind of break it down in different ways. But in all of these different religions and cultures, there is a way of looking at these different spiritual realms. And so, like I said earlier in this video, we're just going to like do a very broad wrapping our minds around this and whoever you are and whatever you're about, you can make your own decision about what it is that you believe. Um, for me, because I follow Christ and I read the Bible, I look at the three heavenly realms and that's what I believe. And it's cool whatever you believe. Um, I will share though that in, in my beliefs where I'm at now, it has helped me to make the most sense out of what I experience, not only in my near death experiences, but also in these psychedelic experiences. So, okay, like we've broken down like just a very basic, like, you know, where are we going when we're using psychedelics? You don't leave your body with mushrooms and acid, but like if you're using DMT and ayahuasca, you are oftentimes leaving your body and your soul, which, you know, your soul, your spirit, however you want to look at it, because our body is the physical container for that soul. And there's been actual uh, scientific studies that have been done that show that our bodies at death, they will weigh people right before they die and then right after. And there is this very, very small 
difference in the weight of our bodies when we die. So there is literally like scientific proof that our soul and our spirit is real. And so when we leave our bodies, when our spirit, soul, however you want to look at it, leaves our bodies, we are going to different levels, different places in these spiritual realms. And so when we are going to these realms, we are crossing paths with, interacting with, like I explained in, in with my experience, like, you know, having these like full blown um, like interactions with these beings. So like, what are these beings? Um, in my faith, they are looked at as demons. In um, other religions, they are called different things all around the world for as a way to um, identify and name these spirit beings, if you will. Um, and so all around the world, there are different ways to look at this. Like sometimes they can be called, you know, ghosts or whatever. So there are beings in these realms. Um, and it is, it, it's, it's understood all over the world, all through different faiths, for, through different religions that these beings are there. So when we are using these psychedelics and we are going into these realms, we are crossing paths with these beings. Um, I'm going to start getting into a, a little bit about the risks and the dangers of interacting with these beings now. So, again, you see me, you see me, I'm, I'm trying to choose my words very carefully, you guys, and I appreciate you sticking with me if I seem like I'm, I'm struggling for the right words because I really want to choose them wisely. So... These beings are, they don't have an age, okay? They, they don't, they're, they're not born and they, they don't die. And so these beings are infinite. We can't even quantify the, the amount of, of time that they are older than us. As human beings, our human lives last 100 years if we're lucky, sometimes less. These beings in these spiritual realms are infinite amounts of time older than us. And they are, because of that, infinitely more wise than us. Our human minds can only um, be as smart as they are, we can only learn as much as we can learn. We can only have as much knowledge as we have. And so these beings, um, they are, they, they have so much because, you know, they've been around in these realms for infinite amounts of time. They are way, way smarter than we will ever be. And these beings as well, and I'm just going to lay it out there. These beings do not have our best interest at heart. Um, there are benevolent beings that are in the spirit realms. In my faith, they're called angels. In, you know, other faiths they're and religions, they're called different things. But these, these angels will not be in some of these realms. And they also, um, real angels are not meant to interact with us. And it's set up that way for a reason. Real benevolent beings, they, they're, they are not supposed to be making contact and communicating with us. Just like we are not supposed to be making contact and communicating with them. They are, they are messengers of God. They are, they are playing out God's plan and God's work is that's that's what I believe and that's the understanding that I've come to after many years of experience dabbling in the spiritual realms with what I thought were angels. So that's that's why I stand on those beliefs. If you don't believe that, that's cool. But the benevolent beings will not their their job is not to make contact with us in those realms. So what does that mean? 
That means that the beings that are making contact with us in these realms that we're going to, that we shouldn't even begin, that we shouldn't even be going to to begin with, these are beings that are not good. These are beings that are there to um, to trick us. They are there to deceive us. And though there may be experiences that we have that are positive, like the ones that I, like the one that I just explained, and I'll get into some in some other videos, but they, they are there to deceive us. And because we are going into these realms, that's basically fair game. We are opening ourselves up to crossing paths with and um, being deceived by these beings. So they can also disguise themselves into many different things. Like they can disguise themselves into people that look like our loved ones. They can disguise themselves into beings that look like an angel of light with a blue sash over their chest. They can disguise themselves into beings that look like animals or whatever it is that may appeal to us and that we will relate and connect to. They can, they can deceive that they can, you know, turn themselves into to deceive us. So the reason why I believe that if that if that being that I was interacting with wasn't the devil himself, um, that it if it wasn't the devil himself, then it was very well a um a, a something demonic and something evil is because that being disguising himself as that angel of light which like i said before as it is said the de the devil himself comes disguised as an angel of light and the, that blue sash was very symbolic for me because i had been getting really into like angels and angel card readings that's going to be another video in itself too and i had been making connections with archangel who i thought was archangel michael and Archangel Michael, I had this like, you know, like relationship with and I had made connections in my waking life. And, you know, I, I was just like completely convinced that when this being came to me in this psychedelic vision, that this was Archangel Michael giving me a review of my life. And why I believe that it was either the devil himself or something completely nefarious and evil is because as I was saying, when I was explaining that experience, this being told me exactly what I needed to hear to stay on the path that I was. Because the path that I was on led to my eventual, almost complete destruction. And I, when I heard, you know, keep working with plants, keep making your music, because at the time I was making psychedelic music and psychedelic art, and I was studying herbalism. And when I say I was studying herbalism, I wasn't just studying like, you know, the medicinal uses of plants. I was getting into it super deep. And I was um, getting into it like in a plant spirit medicine sort of way where like I believed that each plant had a spirit to it and that you could connect with these spirits and that you could then work with them to facilitate healing, um, growth, change, all of that kind of stuff. And so I when I when I was in this like, you know, facet of herbalism and like spirituality, it was great at first. And when I was told in that review to keep doing it, <clears throat> I was thrilled. And I did come out of this experience on the other side going like, oh, you know, that's that's cool. Like I was told everything that I kind of already knew and that I already, you know, like wanted to hear and that I already wanted to happen. But like, that's, that's weird. Like I wasn't given anything like, oh, you know, do something different or step outside of your comfort zone or challenge yourself or whatever. Like it was all very like kind of a canned response sort of thing that added to that deep down knowing inside that like, okay, something isn't completely right about this. But I just took it. I took it like hook, line and sinker. And I was just like, awesome. Like, you know, I'm on the right path. I'm doing this like you know, hippie crap, like, you know, spirituality, like plant spirit medicine, herbalism, psychedelics, all this kind of stuff. 
And so it definitely, it, it impacted me in a very deep level. And it still does to this day because how it played out, and we'll wrap up this video because it's super long right now, is that like, I went on on this path and I kept doing my herbalism and I kept believing that like, you know, God was in every one of us, like a pantheistic sort of view that like, you know, we're all connected, like flower of life type stuff was, which was the sacred geometry stuff was something that I like got like super like, like obsessed with. And so I believe that God was all of us. I believe that God was in every plant and in every animal. So I kept doing my herbalism I kept doing all this weird spirituality stuff where I'm making connections with Archangel Michael and all of these like, you know, angels and spirit guides and ascended masters. And the further that I went, um, the more detached from reality that I became. And it led to my eventual pretty much complete destruction because Kratom crossed my path when I was in this whole like state of mind. And I ended up getting addicted to Kratom. I ended up like wasting away to skin and bones and I would have never killed myself, but I didn't want to live anymore. And so everything that I was told in this vision ended up playing out into what was going to eventually destroy me. So as I came out of all of this stuff, I was saved out of all of this stuff. I was saved out of all of these beliefs the veil was completely lifted from what I had gone through in these psychedelic experiences. And I was beginning to see clearly that what I had experienced in these visions was literally the work of evil. And it was the work of, if it, if it wasn't the devil himself in that vision that I had, then it was somebody working for the adversary because that was that that was going to completely like I, I if I would have kept going I wouldn't have lived anymore so when I moved forward and thankfully by the grace of God like I came out of these beliefs and I started to see slowly but surely that like what I had experienced was a complete deception and it was the most elaborate deception because like I told you like this is one experience like I've had so many where like I'm going into these realms and I'm having these interactions that I think are like for my good and for my healing and I believed it I believed it for so long for uh, for 15 years when all was said and done I believed these things and they almost destroyed me you guys so at the very end of it I sit before you thankful for my freedom from this deception and from these beliefs. Because now that I'm free, I can see so clearly. And that's what I hope. And, and, and it's my intention for you guys too, that if you're watching this and you've had these experiences or you're dabbling with the idea that you want to try psychedelics for healing or whatever, that this will be a warning to you that like, you know, we're not supposed to be in these spiritual realms, you guys. Like it's set up that way for our protection. We are not supposed to open these doorways with these psychedelics and with these spiritual beliefs and stuff. We are not supposed to have contact after we open these doors with these beings because these beings are there to trick us and they are there to hurt us. And they are there to convince us that what we're doing is, is okay, but it's ultimately meant to destroy us is really what it comes down to. So I hope that you, if you come across this, you'll hear my story and that you'll hear that like, okay, and I'm not trying to push my beliefs on anybody. Please get that, that straight. That like, I'm not here to like push like, oh, this is what I believe and this is what you have to believe. I'm here to share what I went through and that I thought that this was good for a really long time, you guys. And I thought that this was enlightening me and that this was like setting me on a path that was going to like, you know, bring my true purpose and like ultimately like, you know, bring me to a place of like enlightenment and like, you know, purpose and meaning in my life. But it wasn't. And so you may find yourself like where you've used psychedelics and you've had an experience and you're still in that afterglow, afterglow honeymoon effect, excuse me, that you feel great and you're in that space where you're having like the synchronistic numbers and you're starting to hear about like, you know, your spirit guides or you're reading your astrology 
thing and it's like you know everything is starting to like you know fall into place and it all seems like it's lining up and it all seems like you're exactly where you where you need to be but like i'm here to tell you that that's not where we're meant to be you guys we're not meant to go into these realms we're not meant to dabble with these beliefs because when we do we open ourselves up for being deceived and you know it's up to you where you where you want to go you know with this information that i provided you may not want to believe it and i'm not trying to convince you of anything i'm just trying to let you know that like i was almost destroyed by this stuff and it wasn't just from this one experience like i was destroyed from all of it my beliefs the psychedelics um the you know plant spirit medicine the communication and going into these other realms, you know, I, I was basically destroyed. And I'm so thankful to be on the other side of it. And I'm so thankful that you're listening to this long video if you've made it this far. Thanks for dealing with me having a hard time finding the words to articulate this. Um, and thank you for hopefully keeping an open mind about this. So I encourage you to let us know if you've had any experiences like this in the comment section. I encourage you, if you oppose this and you're all about psychedelics and you're all about your spirit guides and your angels and all of it, like, you know, I'd love to have like a chill, respectful conversation about this. Like I said, I'm not here to push my beliefs on you. I'm not here to tell you that you should be different. I'm just here to like share what God has done in my life and you know and share what i've been through and i am so down to have like a respectful conversation about this because i i i love it i love i love like you know yes i have i the, i stand firmly on what i believe and what i've gone through but i am totally down to like you know wrap our minds around and like go into like you know deeper conversations if you're willing to have them in a respectful way so I love you all and I hope that you stick around as we continue to unpack all of this stuff about like psychedelics and new age beliefs and all of this here on this channel. All right, so I hope to see you then. Bye.